Schmitz from the Rand Corporation and Tom Vernier uh, from AIA Europe. Uh, they represent the various disciplines of landscape architecture, security <laughs> assessment, and architectural professions. And we hope this will be a very engaging a discussion about what has happened to our city and the region in terms of <coughs> physical impacts and these changes uh, because of uh, uh, increased security measures. This commission has been very involved in that and I think it's a very important topic uh, for all the public and all of us to reflect on. On Friday, September 16th at 9 a.m., uh, we welcome uh, Anna Gelbert Sanchez, the former planning director of Miami uh, to NCPC. Uh, she will discuss Miami's adoption of form-based codes and the award-winning uh, Miami uh, 21 Comprehensive Plan. And that will be here again at the Commission Chambers at 9 o'clock on Friday, September 16th. And also, uh, mark your calendars. Uh, we also have an event with architect Bing Tom, who was the uh, designer of the arena stage on southwest uh, side of the district, uh, as our speaker series event uh, uh, headliner. Um, this He'll explore the legacy of uh, mid-century modernism in Washington and how we could preserve the recent past without losing the future. And this will be uh, held in partnership with the Embassy of Canada and will be held at the Canadian Embassy uh, just down the street on Pennsylvania Avenue. And finally, uh, Commissioner Tagoni would like to uh, just inform the Commission and talk a little bit about uh, Mayor Gray's new sustainability initiative. Uh, so I'll turn over the uh, microphone to her. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to let uh, my fellow commissioners know that uh, uh, the, the mayor has asked us to uh, launch an initiative uh, called Sustainable DC uh, with the ambition of making the District of Columbia the most sustainable city in the country. And so we've uh, kicked off in September with what we hope will be a robust series of discussions uh, from house parties to, uh, to, uh, to big lectures to all kinds of uh, conversations about the ways in which we could have a greener, healthier, more inclusive, more livable District of Columbia. So the website is www.sustainable.dc.gov. And among the things that are on the website right now, it's a, both a portal for people to uh, provide suggestions, initial suggestions about the activities the district should undertake, but also there's a, a discussion guide. So if any of you want to hold a house party, to talk about green energy or transportation or sustainable food, uh, any or all of those topics. Um, it's kind of a how-to guide about how you would hold that discussion, what makes for a good meeting, and uh, uh, a little bit of uh, structure around which you could uh, submit some ideas to the district. So I hope all of you will uh, find a way to participate, and we look forward to coming back to the commission with some of the uh, ideas that we get from uh, our, our citizens and businesses in the city. Thank you. Yeah. There's uh, an, one item on your agenda as well. Um, a week or so ago, we sent to you the proposed dates for the 2012 calendar year meetings. Uh, they will all be, as usual, the first Thursday of the month. Uh, we did include a note in that uh, meeting noting that uh, July, um, we might want to move the meeting a little a bit away from the, the 4th of July. So it was proposed that for the July meeting, we hold the meeting on July the 12th. Is that, at this point, seemingly good for most folks? Um, so with that, everything else is, is usual. Um, July meeting will be, I guess that's the second Thursday probably, in July. And then of course we will not meet in August. Everything else is uh, the same. Uh, adopting the calendar is something we must do. So is there a motion to adopt the calendar for 2012 meetings? So moved. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. The calendar is adopted. Mr. Uh, Mr. I want to go back to the executive director's report. I noticed sure. that in the map, it, there is there any reference to the bike locations? And is that just going to, is that in the map? I didn't notice it. I just wanted The bike share locations? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe they're on there. Um, yeah, that's something I, we can look at. Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, because when you have tourists looking at this, they may want to know where they can get a bike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Item four on the agenda is the legislative update. Ms. Schuyler. Uh, I will just call your attention to uh, the executive director's report in which there are four items listed, legislative items listed, the first having been previously reported on to the commission. Thank you. Agenda item number five is the consent calendar. We have three items. Uh, item number 5A is the ambulatory care center uh, complex at Joint Base Andrews uh, Naval Air, Air Facility, uh, Washington. Item number 5B 
is the building identification signs at the Federal Triangle. And item number 5C is a temporary modular unit for the White House Visitor Center, the Ellipse Visitor Pavilion. Uh, are there any questions or comments on those three items? Hearing none, all in favor? Yes, sir, of just, just one. Yes, sir. Just uh, on the uh, uh, disposition of the existing signs related mm -hmm. to the uh, Ellipse signage project. We, we congratulate you. I think that's a, a wonderful project to standardize and systemize and make them more attractive and functional. But what's the disposition of the old and or existing signs? Taken down, replaced? The, continued the, are you so talking that we have about the, the signs for the GSA project? The, yes. That's not, the, that's on Federal Triangle. This the federal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the ellipse. I'm sorry. Um, I, miss, I misspoke. Most of them are, um, there's 27 signs, I think. 26 of them are replacements. We're adding one. Um, most most of them are in pretty rough shape. I don't know how we're going to dispose of them, but I'll find out. Disposition, I guess, is the is what we were interested in. That they are going to be removed and disposed of, as opposed to yes. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. They're the they're fondly known as the pregnant lady signs. Um, Rumored to be de designed by um, Vignelli, but not so. No, no offense, of course, to the people <laughs> that, that find themselves Otherwise in that situation. Otherwise known as the ribbon signs the ribbon by signs. More, the more genteel in the audience. Um, but they're, they're not designed by um, Vignelli. That was a, that's an urban legend, and they, they do date from the 70s. They are um, some strange aggregate of material. I don't know how we would recycle them, but that's a good question. Any other questions on any item on the consent calendar? Hearing none, is there a motion on the consent calendar? So moved. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of adopting the consent calendar before you say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. It's adopted. Agenda item number 6A is the building replacement at Dunbar Senior High School, and we have Ms. Hirsch. Welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Today I will be presenting a replacement facility for the Dunbar Senior High School in Northwest Washington. This has been submitted by the District of Columbia Office of Public Education Facilities Modernization. Dunbar High School is located off of New Jersey Avenue um, in the central area, and therefore the commission has approval authority over this project. The site is roughly bounded by First Street on the east, N Street on the south, New Jersey Avenue to the west, and the closest street on the north is uh, P Street. The Armstrong Manual um, Training School is located uh, to the north of the existing track, and Dunbar Recreation Center is to the south of N Street. The existing facility was uh, built in the 1970s. At the time <clears throat> it was built, the O Street right-of-way, as well as portions of uh, 3rd Street right-of-way were closed so that this school could be built. Uh, the six-story um, concrete structure is of a very different mass, scale, and character than the surrounding uh, residential community, which primarily consists of two-story row homes or uh, apartment buildings. Since 1917, there has been a high school on this site. Um, the original building was built, you can see up here in the right-hand corner, was built in the collegiate Gothic style. Um, its main entrance was off of First Street, um, and you'll note that O Street and Third Street were continuous. Um, this school was organized around a central gathering space um, or armory. Uh, the main circulation space, classrooms, the gym, the pool were all um, directly accessible off of that center space. Here we can see again an aerial of the existing site conditions. Um, <clears throat> the current school is over 300,000 square feet and um, it's much larger than what is needed for the current student body. Uh, in addition, the footprint of the building um, has disrupted the st city's street grid. Um, the proposed school will be reoriented um, in a similar manner as the 1917 school with a main entry off of N Street rather than O Street, however. Uh, the track and field will shift to the west towards New Jersey Avenue 
In addition, there will be an, an auxiliary playing field on the north side of O Street. Um, <clears throat> the main um, advantage to this site plan is the ability to reopen um, O Street to, um, through traffic and also to open uh, the view shed down 3rd Street. <clears throat> the, sorry. Uh, the, in addition to the actual site layout, the floor plan of the school also looks to the original 1917 building um, and is organized around a central gathering space um, or armory. Um, the classrooms would be located um, in a western wing off of N Street um, and an administrative wing on 1st Street, which would house the auditorium, gym, pool, um, cafeteria, media center, and library. Um, the other advantage to this uh, floor plan is that it would allow for the surrounding community to have access to um, some of the school's amenities, such as the theater or gym, um, when the school is not in session at night or on the weekends. Um, here we can see the proposed um, building. Um, this would be the N Street facade. This is the four-story uh, classroom wing laboratory space. The um, entry plaza will be framed by um, this tower with the armory um, directly behind it and then the, the administrative wing which would hold, hold the offices as well as the cafeteria and um, auditorium. The track will be constructed on access with the new gymnasium and also have access off of N and O streets, thereby enabling the community to also have access to the playing fields uh, when the school is not in session. The main focus of the project um, for all agencies involved, um, including the district's Office of Planning, the district's Department of Transportation, the State Historic Preservation Officer, as well as NCPC, was the opening of O Street, as all recognized that this project presented an opportunity to restore the city's uh, street grid. And as part of the current project, the um, eastern section of the street, closest to First Street, will be constructed. Sorry, I lost my orientation. Where's north? Sorry. Uh, north, uh, north is up. Okay. This is up. Right. North, sorry. That's, oh, I see. In this past May, the commission um, provided con comments on the concept design for the school. At that time, the applicant was proposing um, to visually reopen O Street uh, and use the space for parking rather than making it a functional street. Um, the commission provided comments, and one of those comments was to um, continue to work with the district's Office of Planning and other interested parties on perhaps um, the design of O Street and it becoming a functional vehicular street. Since May, um, through a series of meetings as well as the Section 106 consultation process with the SHPO, um, all parties have agreed and committed to opening the street. Um, at this point, it's a matter of um, identifying the financing and DDOT is working to do that. <clears throat> but all parties recognize the importance of reconnecting the street grid, improving the circulation in the area, and also um, this will allow the school to be um, more integrated into the community, the surrounding community. Um, so with that, the executive director's recommendation is to approve the preliminary and final site and building plans for Dunbar Senior High School, and notes that with the construction of the new school, a portion of O Street will be reopened, and also notes that um, the, the SHPO has asked that if funding is not identified within a year of the Commission's approval, that all relevant parties reconsult to identify possible solutions. So I'm, I move the Executive Director's report, uh, recommendation. With, and then before, I would like to comment, make some discussion. Have sure. Some discussion. Um, it's when it's before for, us. For, yeah, let's, it's been moved. Is there a second before we get to discussion? It's been moved and seconded. It's on the floor for discussion. Mr. Dennis. Yeah, just, just a couple of questions. Just out of curiosity, what is the capacity of Dunbar and what is the school population now? The new school will be approximately 265,000 square feet and will accommodate 1,100 students. Um, the existing school is over 300,000 square feet. I, do, I don't know the current um, existing student body though. Well, what is the capacity of Dunbar now? In its of now it's yeah. uh, over 2,000 students. So the, uh, the number of students has shrunk to the point where it's being downsized to 1917? Is that, did, it, did I understand that correctly? Well the new design is just referring back to the the school that was designed in 1917. It's not necessarily the same capacity that was of the school that was there in 1917. And uh, 
where will the kids be going to school when the construction so occurs? The project will be constructed in phases. Um, the students will stay in the existing building when the new building um, is constructed. And I believe that what will have to happen is they'll find, um, so the students will be able to still use this building while the new building is built on this portion of the site. Um, and what will have to happen is um, a different facility will have to be identified for the, the right. field and athletic activities. While that's being done, after the building, the new building is constructed, this building will come down and the um, new track will be constructed. So there'll be no relocation of the students during the construction phase, is that correct? That is my understanding. Okay, thanks. Uh, I have a couple questions. First, if the old uh, footprint of the school were in existence now, would O Street be openable? If the old, you meaning the, the 1917? Yeah, the original footprint. Yeah, then the O Street would probably be in its, that, the configuration it was in at the time. And so O Street would have been open or closed at that time? At that time it was open. Openable. Okay, well, I ask because I, I have not many, but a few votes that I've taken on the count when I was on the council. One was to close and take down the old Dunbar building. I have lived to regret that act. So maybe I'm having another bite at the apple. <laughs> it's really amazing, you know? If you live longer. Really? <laughs> I saw it come down, and now I see another one being rebuilt. Uh, I'm kind of sorry that the Gothic uh, or the historical architecture wasn't maybe more incorporated. It may save me, make me feel even better. <laughs> but uh, since the location, et cetera, are integrating the historical building, mm -hmm. I'm very pleased. And probably if the facade at least had been maintained, which was an option, but the playing field was something I thought, I felt then it was important for the young people, mm -hmm. uh, that building did not, the facade was not kept. So now the, 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 the tapestry is open for all of this, new building and so forth. So maybe there was something, because maybe this is good. And I'm pleased to see it going forward. I just hope the funding can be found. And uh, there are a lot of very, very historical people associated with Dunbar who will be a part of this, hopefully be a part of this construction. Maybe they can even find, help us find some money if necessary. Uh, and hopefully there'll be a way to commemorate some of them in the construction and, and the, and the uh, do they still have the arts uh, percentage of construction that a bill was passed back in the 70s to have a percentage of all construction uh, include artwork of some kind? Yeah. Uh, is it funding? <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe it's a problem, Rob. It's still on the books. It's hardly ever been implemented. Really? Well, <laughs> another piece I put in that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> but let's hope that maybe on this one they can use some of that money or this idea to put some scripts on the wall of people who went there who were very, very important in our community. Uh, thank you, and I'm pleased. Mr. Hart. Yes. Uh, it's encouraging to see that the design has progressed. The street is now uh, being shown as an open and trafficable street. In the past, I'm assuming that the street right away was vacated for the construction of the school. Will that uh, right away be rededicated as part of this design? So when the, the street was um, closed for the construction of the school in the 1970s, that the the street was the title to that land was given to the budding property owner so it the, the the land is with the district of columbia let me just clarify that i the, the intention our intention certainly is that the that the roadway be rededicated and that's why it's d dot that's looking for additional money to uh you know to fund this yeah and and i'll just point out just for just for the sake of completeness what's shown as the north field parcel, um, we're also encouraging DCPS to basically put out for RFP um, and put housing or an apartment building and basically try to enliven the street, you know, in all four directions. I mean, part of what we want is more safety and more activity there. And it, as you know, school is not a, even an 18 hour activity for most of the year. So, you know, that's part of what we hope to do to make it safer and more convivial for people in the neighborhood. Further discussion or other questions? Mr. Provencia. Uh, there's a reference to the armory. Uh, well, that's a, a design convention. Is that how the current 
building is referred to? Is it labeled? Is I'm, I'm just struggling with the concept of an armory and a school. Right. Armory, armory in the conventional sense as opposed to the design sense? The original drawings were labeled as a drill hall for that yeah. central space. Um, it, they're pretty difficult to see, but I'm, it, I think it's being used more conceptually um, rather than in the same sense that it would be used as a, in military. Was, um, was there some military connection, ROTC, junior ROTC program, something Ms. like that? Mr. Is that Chairman. Was, was that the background? Mr. Chairman, I, I would I'd like to speak to that because, yes, there was a strong ROTC program in those days. Gotcha. Uh, two, theirs, their program was almost as strong as our program at McKinley, mm -hmm. but we did beat them in comp competition. So, yes, that's what it does let, refer let, to. A let, the record, let the record state. <laughs> let the record that, make that, clear. That McKinley, McKinley did beat uh, <laughs> right. Well, okay. it, that's what it's about, I, I think, trying to capture some of that historical ROTC presence. ROTC now? Is well, it, is it, is I don't a, know. Is, I, I wish they were there. I wish program? it was still stronger. It's a wonderful program. But, uh, but uh, I don't know. Is it still going on, Robert Ian? I, okay. That, but that's I, the I believe there is still an ROTC program there. That's The applicant is indicating that there is. There was... Talk about reorienting and shifting the uh, entrance, I think, to the uh, end street side of the building. There was also something in the staff report about the close proximity to both metro as well as uh, bus stations and so forth. Does that shift or extend the uh, entrance to the building just a matter of a, a few steps so it's inconsequential or is it significant? It's inconsequential. Okay. I mean, all right. After hours access for community activities, those are that the current school does not have that type of access, so that's one of the benefits of the new design that after hours access would be provided for the first time. That is correct. Yeah, the okay. after hours access will be arranged with the Department of Park and Rec and um, the public school okay. system. Uh, bleachers looks like the 2,000 bleachers are going to go on the south side <laughs> of the uh, f athletic field with the press box. I can't tell whether it's a large press box and it separates the two sections. What I'm thinking about is typically we separate the seating for the home team versus the visiting team mm -hmm. because of friction, not not only among the students on the field, but the parents in the <laughs> stand. So, um, I believe all of the seating is on the south side of the field. There wasn't enough room um, to the north. Um, I don't know the specifics in terms of how they're dividing home from the away teams. Isn't it one-sided now? Sorry? Is it one-sided now? Um, I thought it was. I remember seeing it from the... Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah, it yeah I think so. I think you're right. Yeah. It's yes. a common thing in the high school. It must be the uh, higher degree of civility we have in the, under the current administration uh, allows us to put opposing teams in close proximity. Exterior design. I understand there's no historical... Uh, facilities in the area, it's uh, homes and uh, residential properties, so, but uh, somebody talked about the per preserving in some way the historical exterior of the building as opposed to, I'm not going to say this is unremarkable, but it clearly doesn't have the same character as the uh, historic building, just as an observation. The north parcel access, no access is needed for that property, it's not to be used in any way, I think that's on slide maybe nine. Yeah, the north parcel field is not going to be actively used at all by the school. You don't need to have any kind of controlled access across the... Uh, no, it will be used by the school. I mean, the, until there will be a crosswalk and, and for them to cross and get across. Right, we're trying to get away from too much controlled access to that parcel. Okay. Uh, also, one of the positive features of the design, I think, is the compliance with the Hyde Act. With the, even uh, even with the new uh, the new tower adjacent to the exterior entrance in the armory, I'm wrestling with the O Street. Um, is the entire rebuilding and reopening of how much of the turn the question around? How much within the scope of this project is O Street? Is it going to be a, a dirt track? Is it going to be paved? Is it at all accessible? What's what's going to be done now within the scope of this project, and what will be deferred uh, for? So later, the area that's in work. this blue box here mm -hmm. will be uh, repaved as part of this project as the loading dock is right here for the school and okay. the entry for the garage is right here. So th my understanding is that this section of the street will be repaved with the construction of the school okay. and that um, DDOT is working to that's identify it. funding for this section. Okay. The reason I'm asking about that is uh, looking at the austere financial environment we're in, I don't know how 
this would prioritize among all the other competing requirements uh, after some proposed language to uh, to amend the uh, the recommendation to, to get a higher level of confidence and assurity that the, this future very important phase as many as we recall in the 60s and 70s, we, the, some of the designs within D.C., particularly for schools, were these big mega blocks that cut off streets. And this is a great uh, effort to uh, to restore that uh, east-west O Street access. But if it never happens, then it Well, what I might suggest instead is that all the commissioners make a pledge to buy their gasoline in the District of Columbia so that we can get that gas tax revenue <laughs> to provide the <laughs> local funding. How's that? <laughs> That's all the questions. Thank you. I, I want to add, uh, I noticed in some construction of some of the newer schools uh, trying to make space available for the public. Uh, sometimes the restrooms are cut off uh, from, you know, easy access. So I'm, I don't want to micromanage and it's probably beyond that, but please try to make sure that the public area that's going to be available for meetings, et cetera, for the community doesn't require uh, people going down a hallway. Mm -hmm. uh, to get two bathrooms that gets them into the school building. At Savoy School, we had a problem. Great, great facility for meetings. But the problem is you got to have guards to keep people because you got to go down the hall into the classroom areas to go to the bathroom. So I'm assuming they're going to think that through. I don't know what happened. I just, that got by us, I think. Yeah, no, I believe there are, there are restrooms in this area so that... You understand what I'm saying, right? N yes. And they got restrooms in the area too, but you got to go past the classes and the whole building becomes opened. The other comment I was going to make, someone, you asked about historical uh, buildings in the area. Top left corner, those stru structured little, those little, I guess they're purple or brick colored houses. One of them is a house that was a resident of one of our mayors. Uh, she, she spent many, many years during the summer in that house with her family. So I don't think that's historical, but I thought I'd just pass it on. <laughs> uh, it is historical. <laughs> Further discussion? Questions, Mr. Miller? No, just along those lines, I would be remiss if I didn't say that this, this is the mayor's uh, alma mater. Exactly. And, uh, That's right. He's excited about, uh, I think he attended the original yes, school, did. and mm -hmm. I think he's excited about it being restored to a, a more glorified place than it is now. And uh, that's all I wanted to say. It's already been moved and seconded. For further discussion? Did you want to pretend about the funding? Uh, uh, proposed amendment? Okay. Something along the lines of this. Should there be a funding issue with reopening O Street, the segment between 1st and 3rd, within one year of the Commission's approval of this action, the D.C. Office of Public Education Facilities Modernization is requested to submit to NCPC proposed solutions for the reopening of said street segment submission deadline would be September 1st, 2012. The rationale is just the language is a little bit loose. It kind of reads, if we ever get around to it, if we can ever raise the money, we would continue, the, as opposed to a, a solid commit with, with some firm delivery dates, at least to, to reconvene and uh, the, the uh, responsible parties. That's the motivation behind the amendment. Can you read that again, please? Sure. Should there be a funding issue with reopening O Street Northwest, the segment between 1st and 3rd Streets, Within one year of the Commission's approval of this action, the D.C. Office of Public Education Facilities Modernization is required to submit to NCPC proposed solutions for the reopening of the said street segment. The submission deadline would be September 1st, 2012. Discussion on the amendment, Mr. Goning. With all respect, this is a district project, district budget. Um, I mean, I very much appreciate the support of the commission in terms of reopening O Street. I know that our interests are very much aligned on that, and I do appreciate it because it's not always true, uh, even with our fellow agencies and district government. Uh, but it was at it was at our initiative that that the O Street is being reopened. I just I appreciate the sentiment. I just think it's not appropriate. Mr. Chairman, unless I would want to add, unless there was a language that said we would find money to help do this if we had problems. No, we. Well, I say that's okay, well. outside our purview. Yeah, they will. Well, undoubtedly, the place where they're looking for money is in the federal highways budget. So, I, you know, that's where I would look if I was a TDOT. Yep. No? It's All local? Federal aid highway. Oh, okay. That's why I need your gas tax, Peter. Okay, thanks. <laughs> well, you, you, you'll get what little I, I contribute. Um, if you had a bicycle tax, it might get something. Yeah. Uh, 
those bikes on the map. I, I would tend to agree. I don't think this is a, a real great concern, the reopening of the road from, from NCPC's perspective. I think that the district is trying to do the right thing, and I have every confidence that they'll get the street reopened. Um, I think there's enough constituent drive for this. I think it'll, it'll happen. It may not happen immediately or as beautifully as it might happen, but I think it'll happen without our having to as was require a deadline. As was previous noted under the current administration in the city, there's probably a higher degree of interest and support than there had been historically in the past. Okay. There is a motion, I presume, on the amendment. Is there a second? Yes, sir. Oh, the amendment? The amendment? Uh, Mr. French's oh, amendment. Oh. <laughs> the amendment has been Absolutely moved. Not. Just to clarify, the amendment has been moved. Is there a second on the amendment? Hearing none, the amendment falls away. We're back to the EDR, which has been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion on the EDR itself? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion is passed. Thank you very much, Ms. Hirsch. And the last item on the agenda is agenda item 6B. It's the energy enhancements to building number 126 at the Washington Navy Yard. And Mr. Hart is here. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. The uh, project before you today is a uh, project that was submitted by the Department of the Navy. It's for a um, uh, it's actually a photovoltaic system on building 386, um, and this is on the Washington Navy Yard. Uh, building 126 is um, also on the Navy Yard. It is a, uh, the main visitor center, and um, the, the photovoltaic system will be on 386 and will be um, used to add um, supply energy to building 126. Um, before I get into the project itself, I'd like to um, uh, get into a little bit of the of background. Um, the project is before us today because the um, previous commission action for a uh, for the the last project at the Washington Navy Yard, which was in June of 2010, um, the commission action noted that no future submittals at the Washington Navy Yard will be considered until an updated master plan is submitted. Um, staff, uh, we have been working with the Navy um, as they have been um, working on their master plan for the Navy Yard, um, and uh, the, there has been uh, great progress. And the Navy is uh, looking to sub submit the uh, uh, master plan to the commission uh, within, uh, excuse me, by the beginning of, uh, of next year. The um, project is a minor project um, on uh, an existing building. Uh, there are no employees in incorporated in, uh, in included in the design, and uh, there's uh, no interior space. Um, in addition, this uh, is a renewable energy source that's being proposed, um, and. Uh, for these reasons, um, the executive director is um, recommending that the commission uh, approve the project um, at the Navy Yard. And now I'll get into the actual design. The Washington Navy Yard is located in southeast uh, Washington, D.C., along the Anacostia River. Um, to the north of the Navy Yard is M Street. Uh, to the east is 11th Street. And then to the uh, west is the, the yard's development. Um, you'll see building 386. Um, here in the, le in the eastern portion of the site, as well as Building 126. There, um, uh, building 386 is a seven-level uh, parking garage that exists at the Navy Yard. Um, the photovoltaic uh, uh, system will be placed on the top level of that parking garage. Uh, the, bar the garage was built in 1987. Um, building 126 is, again, the main visitor center, um, and um, it is uh, just south of that um, of the parking garage. Uh, that that building, 126, was built in 1939, uh, originally as a as a laundry. Um, I've also um, highlighted uh, this building here, which is actually building 405. Um, and uh, the reason that I highlighted it was because uh, this was the last uh, project that was um, the the site of the last project uh, at the Navy Yard that the commission took an action on, which again was June of last year. Um, and at that time, the commission stated no uh, further projects until the master plan, an updated master plan, is submitted. Um, the project itself, oh, and I should also add that the last master plan approved by the commission at the Navy Yard was in 1990, um, a little over 20 years ago. 
Um, the project itself is um, uh, highlighted in green in the middle of the slide of this image. Um, the photovoltaic system here is 3,000 square feet. Um, it is 48 solar, solar panels, um, and it will be installed on a metal framed canopy that will um, uh, be situated on the down ramp of the parking garage, um, the top level of the parking garage. The PV system will be uh, connected to the building uh, 126 via underground um, uh, utility lines. And um, I also wanted to uh, just make you aware that uh, a future submission is for wind turbines. Um, the location is being uh, discussed currently, but the wind turbines and the uh, PV system will be providing energy to the uh, building 126 um, as part of a larger energy energy demonstration project for the building. There's some conservation um, uh, elements as well for the uh, for building 126 um, <coughs> excuse me staff analysis um, staff uh, as I said earlier did has worked with the the Navy um, in understanding the uh, master plan uh, update um, there we've had four meetings uh, since October of last year um, that we've had three additional meetings on transportation concerns um, both at the at the Navy Yard as well as um, uh, out uh, looking at naval um, installations in the region. Um, the uh, update is the, the master plan itself is um, uh, more than 50% complete and um, it will be submitted in either January or February of uh, 2012. Um, again, this is a uh, project that does not include any um, uh, personnel. It is a, um, a, a fairly small project on the um, on an existing building um, and it is um, uh, it, it is a um, uh, it is a project that needs to be uh, sorry, excuse me it's a uh, minor project for the uh, for the site um, for historic preservation this uh, project is on a existing building again built in 1987 um, the Washington Navy Yard does have an historic district but that district uh, these two buildings uh, 386 and 126 um, are not in that historic district the uh, DC State Historic Preservation Office has um, said that this project is not going to be visible. Um, therefore, it is uh, no adverse effect um, on historic resources. And um, finally, it is a renewable energy project. Um, and uh, this aligns well with the uh, Executive Order 13514, as well as the Energy Independence and Security Act. And um, for these reasons, we see this project as a, a minor one on the installation and um, therefore the executive director uh, recommends that the commission approve the preliminary and final building plans for the installation of a 48 panel photovoltaic system on the top level of building 386 and note that although a recent commission action for a project at the Navy Yard stated that no future submittals at the Navy Yard will be considered until an updated master plan is submitted that this proposal is a minor one that does not increase the population um, of the installation does not include any interior space will have no adverse effect on historic resources and is comprised of elements that reduce the installation's energy consumption. And with that, as, uh, as well as no impact on parking ratios. <laughs> and I um, would like to uh, conclude my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Are there questions or discussion on this? I, just, I have a process question for my own edification. Is this just not on the consent calendar because of the Commission's previous remarks about a That's master correct. plan. Is That's that correct. it? Okay. That's correct. That's what I thought. Mr. Hart. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, my company does a lot of work with the Navy, so in this case, I will recuse myself from this item. Yes, sir. <laughs> Further discussion or questions? Mr. Goning? Um, notwithstanding, you know, our issue about the master plan, which I know is still live, and I, I hope it has prompted the Navy to, to be working more closely to it. I think it's a great project. I'm delighted to see uh, the Navy doing this. And in fact, I know the Department of Defense in general is looking uh, very hard at all kinds of uh, uh, alternative and renewable energy sources, uh, you know, for their own security and for the safety of their enlisted personnel. I think it's a, uh, a I think it's great. I can't and I, I hope that they would be willing to share the results that they call this a pilot, uh, a demonstration project. I think the commission would love to hear uh, at some point in the future. Um, the results of their demonstration and see if we could uh, learn lessons that could be applied to other federal buildings. Thank you. On that, uh, you know, a, a power plant of 500 megawatts powers X thousands of 
home, homes, it's kind of a layman's way of describing it. Is there a layman's way of de describing what 28 kilowatts, what kind of impact it has? I mean, it's off uh, the top it, of your head. It, it, there, well, it needs to be in look at kilo kilowatts per hour, and per I've hour. been actually trying to get some is. additional information. Up. No, it doesn't say that in the in right. the the uh, report. It is a 28. It will produce 28. Uh, point, I'm sorry, 22.8 uh, kilowatts of power. There is a, you need to look at what the what that is over over time, and uh, that information we don't have, but um, it is, it, it's just a capacity to be able to, right, this right, is right. how much it can produce at one, at one point. Sure. Um, over time, it'll be a much, you know, larger uh, amount. It's just, it is, they're really looking for this along with the um, the wind turbines to actually produce the um, the, the energy for the, uh, the building 128. In it, and for the they, building itself. For the building right, itself. Right. And they're, they're looking to reduce the amount of, um, basically do energy conservation mm -hmm. in concert with um, producing you know, energy so that they can um, uh, get that, the energy requirements for the, for the building. Yeah. A little microgrid. I, I would just say that I mean, it, the, um, in the district's program for installing, um, where they're providing incentives for, provi for photovoltaics on people's roofs, um, common systems are three to eight okay. kilowatt hours, and they don't provide enough energy to run the whole household. Understood. So it's this is a pretty small right. project. Understood. Further questions or comments? Some uh, comments. I think the Commissioner Trangoning made the comment about uh, what evidence do we have that we have gotten the AVR's attention to upgrade their master plan. I think uh, Mr. Hart covered that. There's been a whole series of meetings both right. on the master planning side as well as the TMP side. And we now have a firm delivery date of January, February timeframe for the master plan. So I, I take those as all positive signs and evidence that the uh, Navy Yard is uh, getting closer and closer to being in compliance. My question is also about the, uh, wh what do you get for 28 uh, uh, kilowatts? I think the answer is, uh, I, I know what the Navy thinks that uh, perhaps uh, someone could address that, what the uh, total usage of Building 126 is that this project is intended to support. And I think that might be a moving target because I, uh, reading the staff report, it looks like this is one of several phases of work. There's previously been work to replace uh, windows and solar tubes and improve the wall insulation. So the consumption and the demand in 126 is coming down as the capacity is growing to provide and maybe perhaps make this building uh, self-sustaining. Geothermal is coming when turbines are being considered for the final phase. So is the Navy prepared to, to say that 28, uh, at, at the current rate, this will take care of 50% of the power requirements for building 126 or whatever the right number is? Mr. Uh, Montgomery. Hello, I'm Kevin Montgomery. I'm representing Naval Facility Engineering Command Washington, NAFAC Washington. Uh, I'm not an energy expert, I'll start out by saying that, but it's my understanding the way it's been explained to me that the total energy generated from these projects, it's a three-phase project, will fully uh, allow the visitor center to operate. It'll be totally off the grid. And it is our main visitor center at the Washington Navy Yard. It's, it's a very busy place in the mornings, as you can imagine. And it is open Monday, through, it's open weekly for visitors who vi tourists who also visit mm -hmm. the Navy Yard, so. Great, thank you. My final comment would be just to uh, commend the Navy on a couple things. One, on the submission of this uh, energy efficiency project, as well as the progress on both the TMP and the master <coughs> planning efforts. So, headed in the right direction, at the right speed. Mr. Chairman, I have one question, uh, and maybe not related to this project, but given the new space and the new presence of Navy at Boulding, former Boulding Air Force Base, do we, do, do, is there going to be any new plans in the direction, or, or can you comment on that now? Because you're pretty tight there on Navy, at the Navy Yard now. At, at this time, I'm not aware of any upcoming, upcoming energy projects yeah. at Joint Base Anacostia Bowling. Yeah, I asked because it impacts on my, my community, and I wanted to know whether they are looking at doing more. But as we said, as, as Carlton said earlier, this is a demonstration project, yep. so I think we're really trying to determine how effective something like this can be. Yeah, I understand that project, but I'm just broader than that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a motion on the EDR as before you? Mr. Hart, is there a motion on the... Oh, you're standing. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's been moved and... It's 
been moved and seconded up. You're talking, me. There is a second, I presume, somewhere. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the project of the EDR say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is passed. And with that, is there anything else to come before the commission? Hearing none, that concludes uh, today's commission meeting, which I think is the shortest we've had in quite some time. Great.